Good morning. This is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. And, well, I'm in my backyard. And my backyard is in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. And I'm lucky enough to live here at an elevation of actually about 2,700 feet. And I have about 18 acres of semi-forested land. And every morning I go for a walk. And today I found jack-o'-lantern fungus. And I am so excited again to find this. And I tell people, you know, in all my videos, I have yet to go out and say, hey, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna do a video to share with everybody on this topic. I just go out and I see what I find. And that's why I call it nature in the backyard because it's about what you might find when you go for a walk outside your house or in a local park or in a forest nearby. So check this out, <laughs> jack-o'-lantern fungus, amazing things, bioluminescent. They're used to suppress cancer. They're very poisonous and sometimes mistaken for a popular and favorite fungus called the chanterelles. So let's take a look at this fungus. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. I'm walking down this trail through the property. And this morning I stopped and I saw. Oh my gosh, can you see those things in the background, orange things? It's amazing. I thought, what is that? These guys literally popped up overnight and I was so excited to see them. And here they are. I was amazed at how bright orange they are and how many of them there are. Check these guys out. Isn't that incredible? Look how orange they are and how many are growing here. It's just this really, really amazing thing to see. I want you to see close by here, I've got a lot of trees that are down. So I need to show you some of the trees that are down here. A lot of these are oak trees. And you can see this is a typical white oak leaf shape, and the jack-o'-lantern fungi like to grow on decaying oak, and we have a lot of decaying oak here. So I'm sitting here with these jack-o'-lantern fungi, and I need to tell you, first of all, these guys are very, very toxic. They're very poisonous, and they're often confused with another mushroom called the chanterelles, which are very, very popular, are more yellow than orange, but many people every year get very, very sick from mistaken identity. I'm not a mycologist. I'm not a practicing mushroom forager. I'm an appreciator of beautiful things in nature and fascinating things, and that's what I'm doing here. If you want to learn more about identifying mushrooms so you can go out and collect and eat them, there are a lot better people to follow than me that are really experts on that because there's so many really great tasty mushrooms to eat, but there's also so many poisonous ones. And this one is a look-alike to the chanterelle, but if you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy to, to identify and compare them. So I'm just amazed by the beauty of these mushrooms and just the way they grow and spread and the shape of them is really, really stunning. But let's pull one up and look at it closely and see some of its features. So here is a jack-o'-lantern mushroom, an aptly named, boy, that looks just like a jack-o'-lantern, doesn't it? Or a pumpkin, except for the fact that there's no stem coming out. And if you look underneath, one of the key features to see is how these gills extend from the cap of the mushroom all the way down into the stem. And that's one of the key features to identify along with the other orange color and the fact that they grow in big, big groups like this. So these gills are where spores are formed. The mushroom 
This mushroom is merely the reproductive part of a plant whose mycelia or fibers of its body are spread out all through the soil, all under here. If we started digging into the ground here, we would find fibers of this particular mushroom going into rotten oak where it gains its energy. It's a saprophytic mushroom. It's taking energy of rotten things and, and digesting it so it could grow. So the mushroom grows almost year round here underneath the ground. And when we see these things that we call mushrooms, the mushroom is really only the fruiting body, as if just the flower of the plant. And these, the purpose of these coming up is to spread spores so that more mushrooms of this species can grow somewhere else. Inside these gills is where the spores are formed. And as this matures, the spores will ripen and eventually fall from the mushroom. They're very, very small they're wind blown and they'll be carried to be carried you know far long distances away from the mushroom and spread somewhere else into the forest land another fascinating thing about these mushrooms is there are two very very important cancer drugs that come from this plant and I often talk about in my videos when I find plants, I tell you, you know, a lot of these plants have histories of medicinal uses, of herbal uses. Uh, the American Indians ha had a medicine man that knew about the uses of plants relating to medicine. Back for hundreds of years, herbalists would, were treating patients with herbal remedies. A lot of these things have been found to have pharmaceutical properties. I did a video recently on black willow and how American Indians used to chew the black willow to relieve headache or chew the bark of the black willow to relieve headache and muscle pain. And later, you know, scientists have found that in the black willow bark is salicylic acid, which is essentially aspirin. So a lot of our medicines and drugs have plant origins. And this one is another one where scientists have discovered because the, the plant is very toxic well, it's also toxic to cancer cells. And it turns out it's more toxic to cancer cells than your other cells. And so that's how chemotherapy originates and how it's used. The jack-o'-lantern fungus gets its name because it's orange and round and superficially look like pumpkins. But the other reason it gets its name jack-o'-lantern fungus is because it's bioluminescent. Like I always tell everyone who watches my videos, don't just listen to me, fact check me, get the name of the plant or animal, research it and see what other people says. And for some people, some reports are that the bioluminescent is really, really clear and really stunning. And then I've read other articles where they say you can barely see it. So one of the things we have to remember in nature, there's great variability in nature. So some people, when they go out to look at jack-o'-lantern fungus at night, say they didn't see anything. And other people said, oh man, it was amazing. So it depends on so many variables. It depends on the exact species that you're looking at. It expect, depends on their, their condition. It depends on uh, their nutrition. It depends on the time of the year. And there can be so many var variables that will influence what a plant looks like or what it, an animal does. And biologists try to make generalities and find patterns and stuff. But every time I say, oh, you know, a snake does this or a turtle does this, somebody comes up and says, well, hey, I found a snake and it was doing this. And so you gotta remember biology is not physics. It's not like measuring gravity. You know, there's a lot of variation. There's a lot of variability and things change. So. The next thing I'm going to do tonight is, tonight, I'm coming back here in the dark, maybe around 10 o'clock, and I'm going to sit and let my eyes adjust to the dark and see if I can find these things being bioluminescent. We'll check that out. So I'll be back with that soon. <laughs> so I'm back out in the woods here, and I walked out very quietly to the spot where the bioluminescent jack-o'-lantern fungi are. And I'm going to pause here for about 10 minutes to see if my eyes will adjust to the dark and if I'll be able to see 
they're bioluminescence. Really bioluminescent. It's not super bright. You need to wait for your eyes to adjust to it, but it's definitely glowing. My wife is sitting here in the woods next to me and I picked up one of the mushrooms, flipped it upside down, and she could see it moving across the forest floor as I walked over to it. Really, really cool. See if I can get some time-lapse photos. Amazing, amazing bioluminescent fungi here in our native Appalachian Mountains. Bioluminescence. Wow, fantastic. So thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. This is Frank Taylor in Virginia's backyard in the Appalachian Mountains, looking at jack-o'-lantern. Amazing to see the glow from the individual mushrooms here on the forest floor. Very, very amazing thing. There's so many cool things to explore and find and discover. Thanks for watching. Please leave a, a message and, and a like, subscribe to my channel, and tell me if you've seen bioluminescent fungi. The other one I've seen was Foxfire, which is uh, what the Foxfire books are named after. So leave a message and watch my video and tell me what you've seen. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me what you want to see me do next. See you later.